Happy Homebrew Halloween! How exciting. Yes, it is Homebrew Wednesday, and it is also Halloween, which I don't celebrate because I'm not American. Um, silly holiday, that's why I'm hid in the shed. Anyway, <laughs> video of two parts. Um, later, I am going to be doing my review of Yellow Belly. Everyone else seems to have done one, so it's high time I jumped on the bandwagon, as they say. Not one I've tried before. Um, just finished bottling. Um, when I say bottling, this is the dregs from my winter warmer uh, from the Bible. Uh, so this is just what didn't fit in the keg, basically. Um, there's a couple of bottles. Well, I've done a little experiment with said little bottles. Let me show you. So, this is winter warmer primed with a sachet of brown sugar. And this is winter warmer primed with a sachet of white sugar. So, um, I've heard that you can use sugar sachets which you pick up from coffee shops to prime. So I thought I'd give an experiment. So done about three, um, three of white sugar, three of brown sugar. I'll do a review side by side comparison, see if there's any noticeable taste differences. Um, let's just see if it carbonates to the right level. You never know. So that's a little experiment which should be coming up. Yeah, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, I don't think this would be a particularly good beer to do the review on though, because of the ginger. It might be a little bit overpowering so you can't tell much difference but I'll do the same with with one of the others as well fermenting away still um, the Russian Imperial Stout on the black one which you can't see it's off camera that's down to uh, 1.043 on the hydrometer making it about 8.9 percent something like that I'll need to double check um, sorry for the hair as well it's a bad hair day it's a my scary hair. I need a haircut. Look, I can't actually see you because I can just see my hair. <laughs> I need a haircut. Anyway, yeah, bad hair day for Halloween. And a clash of colours as well. Right. Um, so, yes, Imperial Stout, 8.9%. The mild is probably about. Uh, Five and a half now, I reckon. I need to double check. And the bloody um, porter in the green fermenter, green fermenter, um, there, that's about 7.8 or something like that now. That just didn't stop fermenting. It's supposed to be 6.5. Oh well. So, yes, we're looking good for the Winter Beer Festival. Update on the uh, old bulldog of Brewer. Um, we sort of have it working, but not very well. I've had to take the front off, uh, which leaves the electric exposed. So I've asked, I emailed the manufacturer to see if they've got any replacement parts. If they don't, then we'll, we'll go from there. So that's that's that. Um, yes, mm, not sure what I'll be making next. I want to do that mead. I brought two big tubs of honey, so I might do a, a small batch of mead. Uh, this is the cranberry and raspberry wheat beer, which has been on keg for about six months now. <laughs> Yeah, I've got all these cakes, but I barely drink out of them. It's bad. That's tasting cold. Um, it's not a bad beer, cranberry and raspberry wheat beer. Just keep going and going there. That's a problem. Um, yeah, so I think that's about it from the shed. Um, the RO water system is in. I'll show you that. There is the RO water system. I think it's got a slight leak. I don't know how to use it yet. Um, but since I can't brew anyway because of the uh, issues I've been having, it will just leave it there for now. And then I'll work out a later date what I need to do. So on to the review part of this Halloween special. So yes, yellow belly. A lot of people have had it before. Now it's my turn. Comes wrapped up in paper. The Imperial Stout, brewed with aromas of peanut and biscuit, 11%. How naughty. 
Um, brewed by Omnipolo and Buxton Brewery at Buxton, Derbyshire. Buxton, I've been to Buxton. And Bakewell. Right, so let's oeuvre it up. Five. Very interesting. It looks like a sheet of A4. There's a little hose in it. Hello, can you see me? Honestly, I haven't had a drink yet. So, yeah, the yellow belly person who is without courage, fortitude, or nerve, a coward. Yeah, yellow belly. To us, one of the most cowardly deeds is to act anonymously, hiding behind a group, a signifying trait of institutionalised racism. This beer is brewed to celebrate all things new, open-minded and progressive. A peanut butter biscuit stout with no biscuits, butter or nuts. <laughs> Taste, enjoy and don't be prejudiced. Yes, yeah, very good words, I'm sure. Bottled 8th of May. So that's Oubre et up. Drinking it in my Samuel Smith's Imperial Stout glass, which you have seen before. And opening it with my Ben Skins Brewery of Watford bottle opener. Don't know why I told you that, but there you go. Mm. Looks fairly thick. I don't know if this can hold a full 3 to 30 milliliter. Oh, it can, just about, nearly. Oh, it can, that's exciting. It can hold a full 3 to 30 milliliter. Oh, that smells good. That does smell very good. It is bottle conditioned, I can confirm. Oh, that smells lovely, actually. That does smell very good. It smells like, it smells really sweet. It's on, my, it's on my nose. What is it with me and dipping my nose in? It smells biscuity. Millionaire shortbread. That's what I'm getting. Is it millionaire shortbread or is it Rocky Road? That sort of, you know. I don't eat, <laughs> contrary to popular belief, I don't eat um, lots of sweet stuff, but. Lovely sweet aroma to it. Yeah, marshmallow, that, yeah, sort of that Rocky Road, marshmallow, chocolate, peanuts. Yeah, that sort of thing. Anyway, let's dive in for a drink, because it's a drinking drink, not a smelling drink. Although it does smell very nice. Not as thick a mouthfeel as I was expecting. Um, the, 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 the nose, the sort of, that really sort of sweet, lactose -y, chocolate, marshmallowy, peanutty taste comes through into the beer. Um, initially it's quite smooth, then you get a sort of a whack of alcohol at the... Uh, at the arse end of the, the sip. I thought it'd be a little bit bigger on the mouthfeel, but it's not. Also getting lots of dark roasted malt flavour. Dark ch burnt chocolate. Um, Yeah, and then sort of like a short cake, shortbread biscuit. There is a peanutty sort of taste in the background, but it's quite faint. It's not a very obvious taste. You do have to sort of go searching for it. There's a lot of sweet, as I said, it's all about marshmallow, marshmallow and biscuit, and then dark burnt malts.
It's very sweet in the fall. Bit of bitter malt alcohol at the arse end of it, as I said. Yeah, it's nice. It's a good beer. Can't remember what I paid for it, probably too much, but you know, I'm, I'm glad I tried it. Probably a little, little sweet for my taste, but it's taste, you know, it's good, it's nice. You wouldn't want more than one without 11%, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice beer. I'd recommend you try it at least once. Um, I'd buy it again if I was so inclined to do so. So you know it's a very it's a tasty tasty dark beer. See lots of roasted malt, lots of sweetness. It's um fairly smooth for an eleven percent beer. Yes, there is a an alcohol hit at the back, but it's not I've had much stronger hits from less alcoholic beers, so um you know, considering it's 11%, it's fairly smooth. My hair's a little bit better now as well. I've gone for a centre parting, because it's Halloween, and centre partings are weird and crazy and scary. So, that's the end of the beer review. What else has been happening? Uh, I'll say you saw what's happening in the shed. Brought um, a one of those glasses, because I thought that glass look lovely. I just realised it's an Oktoberfest glass but I really like it, the sort of the patterns. I've not got an and union, that's it. Oktoberfest glass, but I just like this lovely sort of patterns of the letters. But it was a very nice little glass. Nice shape as well. My friend bought it, um Chris who was here for my hot picking party. And um, I just had to have one. And I was seeing it was, on, it was on offer at Beer Hawk. We also got two beers of theirs the lager and the vice. So, not that much you're worried about them. Brewing wise, going to be doing the mead next, as I said. Um, that needs to be done because I've got the honey for it, so I need to actually get around to brewing it. Mead next, then Watford Beer Festival next week, which I'm looking forward to. And um, going Thursday night, Friday day, Saturday day, so lots of drinking to do. And um, then nothing much until my own beer festival. Um, as I said, I've got three more, three beers fermenting still. The Imperial Stout, which is dropping slightly. The um, Palpatine Porter, the um, Frankenstein version of Founders uh, Porter clone thing. That just keeps cementing. And the uh, Ruby Mild from the Bible, which is um, still fermenting. So, you know, the, the beers which are still fermenting are still fermenting. Um, <laughs> the Imperial Stout and the Porter will go on keg, um, probably. And the Ruby Mars going on cask. Um, I've brought a, a metal pin, so I need to work out how to put that together. I might do a little video on that actually. Um, casking your own beers on the homebrew level. Only really worth doing if you've got a beer festival, I reckon, because you've got to drink them in three or four days. So, um, now, you know, that's four and a half gallons, and which is what? Uh, eight pints to a gallon, isn't it? Uh, so it's eight, 16, 24, 30. Two thirty-six or thirty-seven, thirty-eight pints thereabouts. So that's quite a lot of beer to drink. Um, so yeah, only really worth doing for the beer festival. What I'll do with that mild is I'll um, get it ready for the Friday night, and my friends who are coming over to help me set up for the um, Dark Side Beer Festival. You can have a couple, and then hopefully finish it off on the Saturday. So yeah, all good. Right, that's enough. Happy Halloween if you celebrate that sort of thing. If not, it's All Saints Day tomorrow, so hooray. Um, November already. Well, nearly. Will be. Where has the year gone? It's just disappeared. Quite scary, actually. Anyway. Right. Happy Homebrew Wednesday and au revoir and see you again soon. <laughs>